Hey guys, I uh, haven't uploaded any videos for a while because I haven't really been doing anything that I thought was interesting enough. I, I have been pulling in gold pretty much every week and I'm, I'm doing pretty well so far for the year. I've got um, a couple of ounces or so melted here and um, got another 10 grams or so in powder ready to go. I tend to these days just save it up until I get to about an ounce and then I'm, I'm melted up. I think this is actually a 1 ounce and a 35 gram button or something like that. But um, yeah, pretty happy kind of coming, coming towards my uh, my 3 ounce for the year total. So I feel like I'm pretty much on track for that. It's not looking too bad. But what I have been uh, doing lately is rather than processing big batches of mixed things, I've been processing smaller batches of individual items so that I can get a better grasp when I look at things of how much the actual value is that I possibly should be paying if I'm buying the e-waste. And so for instance I can I can look at a a single BGA chip from a piece of RAM and have some idea on average of what the value of each one of those chips are. Uh, same thing if it's a like a bigger BGA chip like these these kind of Northbridge, Southbridge type chips. Um, yeah, and so what I I'm kind of running a bit low as you can see there, running a bit low on my my normal kind of pay dirt. Uh, but my what I call my junk CPU bucket is getting relatively full. So this is just an ice cream container. And you can see that it's it's just you know anything that's not ceramic just gets tossed into here, and this is starting to look okay now. So I thought what I might uh, do this weekend is run through here, and process essentially this whole bucket and try and figure out what the value of each one of these uh, kind of CPUs are. So if you see a, for instance a, let's call these ones a large fiber CPU, uh, basically just figure out what what kind of value I should be attributing to each one. So yeah, what I and obviously on pretty much all of these CPUs, the vast majority of your gold is going to be on the plating on the pins. And so what I'm likely going to do is I'm just going to um, throw them in the Trommel depopulator, heat them up, get the pins to fall off, uh, remove all the capacitors and things like that, and then just process the pins straight. What I'll start with is I'll just sort out all of the all of the CPUs that kind of go together. So I'm going to I'm going to mix up uh, the Intels and the AMDs, for instance. But I'm going to separate them and, and saying that, for instance, these are a large fiber CPU. This is a kind of large heatsink, smaller size. So I'll, I'll find some kind of system to describe what they all are. And essentially, I want to know the value per unit. So I'll count the number of units, and I'll set up a little table that I'll obviously share with with you guys as the video progresses about. Uh, you know, you, you start with so many CPUs, that turns into so many grams of depopulated pins, which then turns into so many grams of gold. And yeah, as you know with my videos, there's no BS. Uh, what I find is what you guys find. So um, yeah, hopefully this will be a little bit interesting to some of you. But I think the first step is I'll go through, I'll sort all of these CPUs out into their groups, uh, make a little bit of a table and a piece of paper of um, what, it, what they are. And then we'll go from there. Uh, in terms of processing them, once I've once I've got them kind of depopulated and I've got only the pins, uh, I will likely. I know a lot of you guys are are going to tend to want to take time and maybe put the the, the copper based ones in AP and dissolve away the base metals and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not really. You know, I, I kind of want to get this done on the weekend. So what I'm likely to do is I'm just going to hit the pins with uh, strong AR, Aquaresia, and just dissolve everything. Uh, you're not going to get the cleanest possible drop, but you're going to get a number that is very close to the, the actual number. So yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do here. Um, probably won't film most of the actual processing because there's not going to be anything very exciting in it. But if, if any, if any in interesting parts pop up, I'll, um, I'll video them as well. Okay, I'll get to this and see you guys a bit later. Okay guys, so I've uh, quickly kind of catalogued what I've got here to work with and I've just got my basic table set up here. So I've essentially broken them into three sizes. We've got the 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter, so they're, I call them large fiber, 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter. 
and we've got 26 of those to work with. Uh, four of them had the heat sinks on the top, but they are essentially still the same kind of green fiber, so I've grouped them together. The next ones, which I call the medium fiber, which are these ones here, they are 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, and um, I have 24 of those, and then what I call the small fiber ones. So, so if we go back to these ones, we've got uh, P3s, uh, in, uh, Intel P Pentium 3s, and Intel Celerons, and we've got some AMD Athlons and Semprons. And here for the medium fiber ones, we've got a lot of like AMD Sempron, Athlon, Athlon 2, Athlon 64, 64X2, Phenom, FX, and Mobile Sempron. And for the small fiber, which are 35 by 35 millimeters, I've got Intel P4 and Intel Celeron. And I've got some AMD A8s, AMD Mobile Semprons, and AMD Tyrion, Tyrion 64s. And of those, we have 57. So, um, yeah, I haven't obviously depopulated them yet, but once I do that, I'll fill in the depopulated pin weight, and then once I've processed them, we'll fill in the gold weight, and we should be able to get a dollar value based on the amount of gold per CPU. So, um, yep, I'll get cracking with the depopulation, and I'll see you guys a bit later. Okay guys, so hopefully that little video showing the Trommel depopulator has worked out okay. You can see I've just finished the last of the small fiber chips. Got a nice amount of gold pins down the bottom. And if we look over to this side a little bit, I've got the uh, large fiber and medium fiber CPUs. And I've got the pins that came from them there as well. Uh, obviously that still needs to be cleaned up. That's got a lot of little bits of... Uh, like foam from the top of the CPUs and stickers and stuff like that that came off as well in there. But um, yeah, I guess you guys can see from this video how how nice and easy just having a simple little uh, Trommel depopulator like I built here is. Um, I did show how to do this in a in a separate video. Uh, you can see there's a few um, a few little dies and things that have come off as well from the CPUs, but that's no big deal. All of that stuff should be pretty easy to just sieve out from the pins. And um, yeah, so I'll just clean uh, all this up, clean all these pins up uh, individually, get them all weighed. Uh, based on the amount of solder that I can see on these actual pins, I think I'm probably going to do a hydrochloric leach first just to get rid of the worst of the solder, uh, rather than just go straight for AR. But um, yeah, it should still be a pretty straightforward process. So... Um, Yep, I'll get on with that and I'll see you guys a bit later. Hey guys, okay, so I've cleaned up and weighed these um, recovered processor pins. Uh, so the large fiber and the medium fiber pins uh, cleaned up very well because there was quite a big difference between the size of the actual pins and the size of the little capacitors that were on the, on the CPUs as well. The small fiber didn't clean up quite as well. Uh, so there's still a few capacitors in there, but um, they are not really going to affect my my yields at all in terms of gold. So I'm not really too worried about uh, getting every single one out of there. So for the large uh, fiber, for 26 of the CPUs, we had about 69 grams of pins. Uh, 24 of the medium fibers were about 45 grams, and 57 of the small fibers were about 57. So you get for the small fiber about one. A gram of pins for every CPU so I'm not sure what that's going to equate to in terms of gold but probably not very much so I think the next step is to get these into three separate beakers uh, with some uh, warm hydrochloric acid leave them for maybe oh, three or four or five hours we'll see until it looks like all the uh, all the solder is gone the the solder on these based on how old they are is almost guaranteed to be mainly tin so a warm hydrochloric bath should take care of that pretty well. And um, yeah, then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys a bit later. Okay, so we've got the uh, warm hydrochloric acid there in with those. These are the pins from the large fiber processors. 
and as you can see, nice vigorous reaction. The fact that the um, the gold basically completely surrounds the base metal on these means that we're not actually going to be attacking much of the of the base metal inside the pins. We are mainly uh, attacking the solder that attached the pin to the CPU, so which is what I want to do. And then once I've gotten rid of most of the solder, um, I'm just going to go straight to Aquaregia uh, to recover the gold. But this uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid that I'm using here. I will just pour over into the next uh, batch of pins to do this with and I'll go through all three batches obviously separately like this so we can track the yield from each type of CPU. So this is, uh, yeah, this is running pretty well. With this warm hydrochloric you don't need it to be super warm. Uh, probably about 60-70 degrees Celsius or so is more than adequate to get this done in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, heat always helps with uh, dissolving away tin. So I'll leave this for an hour or so and that should uh, hopefully do the business. Okay. I'll be back a bit later guys. Hey guys! Okay, so for you guys this didn't take very long. I was kind of hoping to get all this done in a weekend or so but it took me almost a week uh, just kind of doing it when I get a bit of time. So all three of these uh, sets of processors have been through uh, two um, refining cycles. Uh, I did a single refine but the drops were about as ugly as you would expect so I've, I've gone through and, and did a second refine on all of these to uh, yeah to get some good results and so let's get them on the old uh, the old lie detector here and see what we've got. I've, um, I've got my original piece of paper down there I'll fill the values in as we go and then I'll go away and do a bit of math and then come back to you guys with the, the kind of per processor results. Um, at the moment it looks here like the the small fiber processors on the right had about the it looks like the most gold. I mean we're, we're gonna have to weigh it up and see what it's like. The um, the large fiber processor is a little bit better, the medium sized ones bugger all there. I mean all of this is a very small amount of gold but yeah let's chuck it on the scale and uh, see what we've got. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yep that looks alright. So I've got a few grams already in there so we're gonna tear that off. Okay here we go. I need some, uh, so this is the large fiber. I need some gold brush dramatic music in the background. Let me just make sure it's all loose. We want to get every every tiny little bit of gold we can into this into the catch container. See what we've got. Okay, so what we've got is bugger all. I'd be honestly from having. 20 something of those large fiber processors I was really kind of hoping for about a gram or so from them but we have only ended up with 0 0.18 gram which is really bugger all and obviously the problem with such small amounts is that uh, very small errors or you know very small mistakes or tiny bits of gold that you lose in the processes end up being quite a large fraction of the result. So these are going to be the medium fiber. Let's have a look. It's all nice and loose. I was kind of hoping for a bit more. I don't think this is even going to be... Oh, let's turn that on again. I don't think this is even going to be quite as much as the small fiber was, but we'll see what we've got. Okay, zero that one off. Oh, sorry, it's the large fiber. So from the medium fiber processors 0.12, that's pretty terrible. Zero point, let's make it 0 0.13. And so the small fiber uh, looks like the most gold and we had many more of them. So let's just zero that. Let's see what we've got. Make sure everything is nice and good to go. It looks surprisingly not as bad as the other ones. Yeah, so about 0 0.32 grams. So all of this together didn't even make one gram, but 
you know, if I didn't do it I wouldn't know what they're worth, so well worth doing. Okay, 0 0.32 grams for the small fibers we had. Okay, I'm going to go away and uh, print out a new page, do a bit of math, and I'll get back to you guys with the results. Okay guys, so here we have the final results. Um, our depopulated pin weight, the weight of gold recovered from those pins, number of CPUs obviously, and the first thing that I calculated was what the yield was based on the weight of the pins. And so for those large fiber processors we got about 2.6 gram per kilogram of pins, medium was 2.9 gram per kilogram of pins, and the small fiber surprisingly high at uh, 5.6 grams per kilogram of pins. So um, I think what happened here are the pins are much smaller, because and there's many more of them, which means that with the same thickness gold coating as these ones, uh, you end up with a little bit better ratio of gold to base metal on this one. Then the next thing is I worked out the yield per CPU, and they're actually amazingly close. The, um, the, the older ones are uh, actually slightly better at almost, let's say, 7 milligrams uh, per CPU. The other two around 5.5 milligrams per CPU. And what I did then next is um, based on, I, I kind of always work on a, a nice round number of $50, $50 New Zealand per gram of gold the actual value of each of those CPUs and um, yeah so as you would expect the um, the older larger fiber processors end up being worth about 35 cents each in gold the the other two very similar about 27 and 28 cents individually uh, per processor which um, I think if you're able to if you're paying by the kilo and you're able to buy the large fibers by the kilo, you'll end up doing fairly well uh, because they don't, or very few of the large fiber processors have the big copper heat sinks, which means that you get much more, many more processors for the same money than you do uh, based on the medium and small fiber processors. Uh, also worth paying attention to how small these numbers um, in recovered gold is, which means that even if you lose a tiny little bit uh, and filters and things like that, it has quite a big impact on a small test like this. So, one final thing to uh, keep in mind is that these kind of uh, pinless processors, uh, when I last did them, I think I came up with about uh, 8 cents or something like that uh, per processor. And so even the, even the small fibers are, uh, with pins are worth much more in terms of gold recovery, but really um, with how much of a pain it is to recover so little gold um, chemically in terms of the waste you create, uh, I think it would well be worth looking at uh, possibly doing some kind of uh, smelting and copper refining operation or something like this when you're kind of recovering from plated material like this. But um, yeah, hopefully this information will be uh, useful to you guys to kind of get some idea of what things are worth. Uh, obviously. If you get uh, different results from this, or if you have some different yield data you're willing to share, I'd be very, you know, very interested to hear if you think uh, this is uh, about right, or whether you think I'm way out on anything. Cool. Catch you guys later.